Okay, this video is going to show um, how to depreciate a long-term asset and then how to sell it for either a gain or a loss. So in order to do this, I've drawn out some T accounts so that we can see how these transactions affect the actual general ledger accounts. So I've made an, a ledger account of equipment, accumulated depreciation, depreciation expense, gain, loss, and cash. So let's just briefly talk about what type of an account each are. Equipment is an asset, so it's going to go up with a debit and down with a credit. Accumulated depreciation is contra to the asset, so it will work the opposite way. Therefore, it will go up with a credit and down with a debit. Depreciation expense is an expense, so it goes up with a debit, down with a credit. Gain and loss is going to be on the income statement, so it can be seen like a revenue or an expense. Gain will work like a revenue, so it will go up with a credit. Loss will work like an expense, so it'll go up with a debit, and it will be found other, under operating income, and if it's a gain, it'll add to operating income, and if it's a loss, it'll reduce operating income to get you down to net income. The reason it goes below operating income is because your normal business does not sell its long-term assets that it usually uses, so that's not called an operating activity. Instead, it's done just occasionally, maybe when they need a new piece of equipment to be replaced. Um, so therefore, it goes under other to get down to net income. Okay, so let's say that we purchase a tractor for $500,000. On the day that we purchase this tractor, we'll debit equipment $500,000. And we will credit our cash if we paid cash for that. What would change on our financial statements on that day is that cash will go down by $500,000 and equipment would go up by $500,000. So basically we've just traded an asset for an asset and therefore nothing changed on our income statement. It's strange for students to think about it sometimes, the fact that we spent $500,000 but yet our net income was not affected. The reason it was not affected is because we have not yet used up that equipment. It is sitting there for us to use and for us to generate revenues by using that tractor. So nothing affects our net income yet. Now, at the end of the first year, we're going to depreciate that equipment. And some companies do it monthly, some do it yearly, but let's just say for ease, we're going to depreciate it um, each year. So if we were to do this by straight line depreciation, we would say that our tractor was worth $500,000 and its useful life is going to be five years. And it doesn't have a salvage value, so we'll just say 500,000 divided by five. Every year we're going to depreciate it by $100,000. So every year we're going to make an entry that debits depreciation expense $100,000 and credits accumulated depreciation. So at the end of that first year, we're going to have an expense over here of $100,000. So that will reduce your net income by $100,000. And it will be operating income because that is considered an operating expense, that depreciation of that equipment. And so over here, we will put our accumulated depreciation balance just below the equipment to show that 500 minus 100,000 gives us our book value of that equipment. So right now it has a book value of $400,000. We would continue like this for five years. Okay, now of course our depreciation expense starts over every single year because we close that account. So on any given year, your net income will just be reduced by $100,000 because that account closes after at the end of each year. However, accumulated depreciation is a permanent account, so this one's going to keep going up. At year two, it'll have $200,000. At year three, it'll have $300,000. At year four, it'll have $400,000. And after year five, it has the whole $500,000 sitting into it. So at this point, you would see that your book value of your asset is zero. You would call that fully depreciated. Now, you're still using that equipment. That tractor is still good for you. 
So we need to show the users of our financial statement that we have a tractor that we originally paid $500,000 for. It's fully depreciated, however, we're still using it. After this point, you would have no more depreciation expense each year. You would be finished with your expensing of that tractor. All right, let's say that we then sell that tractor, say around year seven or something. And let's say that we get $25,000 for selling that tractor. We would debit cash for $25,000. You would need to get rid of your accumulated depreciation. How much is in your accumulated depreciation at this point? You have a credit balance of $500,000, so you're going to debit it to get rid of it. Because after you, after you do this, you don't have anything left. You need to wipe it all off your books because once that equipment's gone, you don't need to hold on to its accumulated depreciation. So then you would get it down to zero. All right, and then your equipment. You're selling this equipment. You need this equipment to go away also. So you're going to credit it for 500000 Okay, because after you sell it, it doesn't need to be on your balance sheet. It needs to go away because it's been sold. So to make that happen, you credit your equipment for 500000 all right, at this point, you can calculate your gain by just seeing what you need to balance. So your total debits equal 525,000. Your total credits equal 500,000. It looks like you need a credit of $25,000 to balance. If it's a credit, it'll be a gain. If you had needed a debit to balance, it would have been called a loss. So then that gain would come over here and it would be shown on your income statement. So that is how to calculate a gain or loss of a fully depreciated asset. Now let's say that we actually did this during year, after year three. So I'm going to back up and get rid of some of this information because we are going to go back and we're going to sell this item after year three. All right, so at this point, our accumulated depreciation just had 300000 in it, didn't it? All right, and let's say we still get $25,000, but how much accumulated appreciation needs to go away now? Just $300,000, right? All right, what's your equipment cost that needs to go away? Well, once you sell this, you still need to get rid of that whole $500,000, so we'll leave it there. All right, now what would you need in order to balance? You've got $325,000 on this side, and you have five hundred dollars on this side. So this time you're going to need to debit to balance. So you have 325 and 500. So you actually need a $175,000 debit to balance and I'll just double check that by highlighting this and looking at the bottom and seeing that that equals 500,000 and this equals 500,000 so I'm in balance. So at this point you have a loss of $175,000. So it doesn't matter if you're fully depreciated or not fully depreciated. The rule is, is that you need to get rid of all the assets related to that equipment, which is just the equipment and its accumulated depreciation. Once you get the balances of those down to zero and account for any cash that you may have received, and if you didn't receive any cash, that would just be zero and that's fine. And then the difference in your debits and credits will give you a gain or a loss. If it's a debit, it will give you a loss. If it's a credit, it will give you a gain. That's how you calculate gains and losses on the sale of depreciable assets.